نسأل الله العظيم رب العرش العظيم أن ينصر إخواننا في غزة وأن يربط على قلوبهم ويثبت أقدامهم ويسدد رميهم اللهم إنا نسألك أن تكون لهم ولا تكن عليهم وأن تمكن لهم ولا تمكن عليهم يا الله اللهم يا مجري السحاب ويا منزل الكتاب ويا هازم الأحزاب اهزم أعداءهم يا رب اللهم لا تحقق لهم في غزة غاية ولا ترفع لهم فيها رايا يا الله اللهم كن من كان معهم مع من كان معهم واخذل من خذلهم ويأسك الله سبحانه وتعالى to enable our brothers and sisters in Gaza and Palestine to victory to hold them steadfast on his path to give them patience and persistence to face a brutal enemy that has it has made it clear that their intent is to ethnically cleanse Palestinians out of their lands. Amen. Amen. With that being said, uh, not to put a sober moment on the event, I want to thank all of you guys uh, for coming here tonight. MashaAllah, it's a great turn turnout. And hopefully you will like uh, what we're going to be talking to you guys about tonight, which is the master plan. I had a brother stopped me. Uh, where is he? And he was like, um, I am so excited to see what you guys have got going on because I heard that vision during Ramadan of last year. And certainly we've been thinking through that since Ramadan of last year. Inshallah, we'll show you that in a minute. So um, go ahead, Brother Noor. So as, as we go through this, um, I want you to think about two concepts. The first is the concept of action, and the second is the, a concept of empowerment. Our religion, subhanAllah, is a religion of action, and it's a religion of empowerment. There is certainly a, a, a spiritual aspect, a strong spiritual aspect to what we do, right? But it is, if you think about it based on action, I was listening to a teacher of Quran from Al Medina. And they were asking him about the students of Gaza that go to Al Medina to memorize the Quran and what is so special about them. And he said, everybody comes here and focuses on the spiritual as aspect of the Quran. The people of Gaza come here and when they memorize the Quran, they put it into action, right? And it, it is embodied you're seeing today on TV screens. Their, their resilience, their persistence is really a byproduct of a generation that was raised on Al-Quran being a handbook for life, not just something you read and memorize every now and then, right? It is something that they have put to action, mashallah. So those are the two things that I want you to keep in mind. Why pursue a master plan? We'll talk to you about that. We'll, we're gonna let you in into the, into the thought process that has taken a while, and the things that the board has thought about along with the volunteers and the architects that we engaged and involved into this process. Then, for those that don't know ICYL, we'll spend maybe a minute on that and talk to you about that. We'll, we'll review the mission and the vision, because when you hear me, and, and I think some of you are probably tired of hearing me, I always bring everything we do back to the mission and vision of ICYL. That is very important so that all the resources that are utilized, your resources, are used for a common goal going forward. They're not Band-Aid solutions, right? Um, we'll go over the mas master plan so you will see it. Recap of features, cost, and timeline. We'll talk about some of the things we thought through when we did the, the design. And then, that's why we're here. We wanna hear from you, we want your feedback, uh, we want to answer any pressing questions that uh, you might have. And then Brother Noor will talk to you guys about how to give us feedback above and beyond this session. Let's go ahead. So we got the, the, the question what we, we were asked. MashaAllah, we, we have a facility, right? We, we, we pray here. And uh, why are we doing this, right? Why are we doing this? So SubhanAllah, I was talking to one of the original people that started ICYL, and uh, 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the families, the wealth, the resources of every individual who started this place. This place did not just start by what you're sitting in today. This place started back in 1997 when six, seven groups of our community decided that, you know what, we have, we have to have a vision around the masjid. Then they, they lobbied one of the brothers who had a warehouse. They went and started praying there. Can you keep those lights on, please? Whoever turned those lights on? No, no, just that's fine. Then that group of people, may Allah bless them, then, you know, again, progress, again, actions. They took action. They started brainstorming. They started raising funds. They said, you know what? We need to go buy a place for our Muslim brothers and sisters to pray in. They went, bought a small warehouse, a two-bedroom, a two-room house, a warehouse. Prayed in it, grew. Then went, bought a 3,000-square-foot warehouse. Then they grew. Then they started again brainstorming. Until back in 2002, they formulated ICYL as a legal entity, right? And then they bought a piece of land and, you know, through relationships with the city, found out this place was for sale, and that's how this place came about. So a lot of sweat and blood went into creating what you guys are sitting in. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you that have participated and work towards enabling the current board to build on the vision and the strategies that you guys have outlined. So this is not about us, right? And, and you guys will hear me say this all the time. This is not about us. This is about the next generation and the generation after and the generation after. The, the, the current generation, Gen, what are we on, Z now? Alpha, whatever it is, right? If you, your kids, your 17, 18, 19 year, year olds, they're action based. I mean, you see them today. You see what they're trying to accomplish through social media and everything else, right? They have a vision of what they want. They have a vision of how they want to engage, right? Today, as we stand today, we're not able to meet that, period. We're just not able to meet that. So we have to build a structure, a foundation for them to be able to first formulate their identity, attach their identity to it, and then be able to build upon it, right? Brother Noor, how many events did we run this year? Two, over 290. 200 and ICYL ran 290 programs this year, mashallah, right? How many, percentage-wise, how many would you say we ran out of space? So we serve about 2,000 people at any time. You guys see it on Fridays. You guys see it during Ramadan. And a lot of people will say, well, I don't need to you know, go invest a whole a lot of money to build a place just for a month out of the year. Well, that month can be a differentiator in the life of a young man or woman that comes to the masjid, the experience that the, the face or the experience when they come here can be a huge differentiator. Um, so that's, that, that's part of the reason and the rationale of why we're doing this. Next slide. So I went over this. I'm not going to belabor this anymore. You guys see our mission, our vision and our core values all over the masjid. I want to focus on one thing, which is creating that um, character of a resilient Muslim, right? Especially the young people you've got, you know, believe it or not, you know, I've got, alhamdulillah, I have four kids um, in their late teens and their 20s. Uh, I know, thank you very much. I look very young for having, this. thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, but. What, what you'll find as these kids grow, they're facing unprecedented pressure, right? In your household, they have one identity. In front of their mom and dad, they have one identity. As they leave your house and go to school, they have another different identity. As they leave school and go hang out with their kids, they have a completely 
different identity. And then as, if they're working as they to work, they have a different identity there, right? And that is just within their society, within their community, right? Factor in the global events that are taking place. You know, just, you're seeing one. You're hearing all this stuff about Islamophobia. Remember when we, when the, the events back in Palestine started, we held a session here and mashallah, the place was packed full. I had a 14 year old come to me after the event, Dr. Subhan and I were here talking about it, asking me if God actually existed and he actually liked Muslims, as you tell me, why would he allow this to happen to children? It's a tough question. It's a very difficult question, right? So you see, it is very important for us to have an environment being in the center here that enables these young men and women, right? to solidify their identity, that Muslim identity, be proud of it and display it regardless of the environment they're in, right? We want them to be like the coffee grind when you put it in hot water. It makes the water coffee. Not like a carrot when you put it in hot water, it adapts to the hot water and becomes soft and so on and so forth, right? We want them to change their environment to fit and meet their needs as opposed to them changing to, the fit, to fit the environment they're in. And that takes a lot of work, brothers and sisters. That takes a lot of work, dedication, programs, and a center that helps mold that person, personality and character. We, we talked about this whole concept of serenity, right? When you come here, when you walk in here, whether you're coming here to pray, whether you're coming here to drop off your kids at one of the programs, whatever the activity that you're coming here, right? We worked on crafting a center, and I'm gonna emphasize a center. It's not a masjid, it's a center, right? That gives you that serene, serene environment, that, that connection to it, right? And you will see that, inshallah, throughout the presentation. So, this is the big reveal, inshallah, you will like it. So, I want you guys to, uh, Focus for everybody that's in the kitchen. I want you guys, please come out of the kitchen. Everybody in the kitchen, please come out of the kitchen. Farouk, that includes you, brother. I still see like 10 people in the kitchen. Okay. I lost, I just lost voice. Yeah, I know, because I'm switching. All right, we're ready? Can we turn these off or no? Okay.
All right, what do you guys think? Awesome. That's perfect. All right, glad you guys like it. We can run it again if you guys want us to run it again. But inshallah, we'll have the video running on the screens throughout the masjid so you guys can, uh, can take a look at it at any point in time. Um, so as you can imagine, this is, uh, I think the, the architect at the end of the day almost shot, wanted to shoot me because of the number of iterations we had to go through and the number of changes to the design. Um, alhamdulillah, this property has some, some very interesting challenges. The first challenge, are we going to talk about that at some point? Some of the design considerations? Um, the next slide. All right, so, right so that's fine. So, so some, of the, some of the things we talked about and some of the things that hopefully you saw, which is the grass and the water features in the front, inshallah, and right in, in, uh, as you enter into the, the masjid and the musalla, Again, just to give you that fluid feeling that you are in a serene environment. Again, we talked about that. Uh, the prayer hall, um, the interesting thing about the prayer hall, again, we had to apply this concept of fluidity in design, meaning that the prayer hall had to expand to accommodate up to 2,500 people, so the new facility inshallah we will be able to accommodate 2500 of our brother, brothers and sisters just to give you relative we can accommodate maximum of 700 today and that is here the musalla and sometimes outside right so the north lobby the west lobby will open up on the musalla as well as the sports hall will open up on the musalla in a seeming manner to be able to expand or contract based on the number of people that are in the musalla and sisters the second floor in the grand mosque is not where you will be put that is just for overflow it will be installed inshallah integrated into um, into the main musalla as as it is today um, we talk the extension business center business center is near and dear to my heart I work in corporate America and I cannot tell you how many brilliant Muslim minds are stuck in large corporations and think about it this way when was the last time you've heard of a Muslim startup that made it in this country that became huge success like uh, I don't know like a mobile eye or a Facebook or a Twitter whatever right we don't hear of those right so we want the basic concept here is we want to create an open concept business center on the second floor that enables students that enables entrepreneurs to come in and collaborate on ideas. It's gonna have, inshallah, it's gonna have um, conference rooms that will be used for conference calls, for meetings, things of that sort. Uh, it'll have printing, high internet, um, high speed internet. We will be inviting uh, corporate executives to come talk to our, to our young brothers and sisters. We will be bringing entrepreneurs and inshallah, at some point in time, the vision is we will connect that to a funding mechanism that our young minds can come in, pitch ideas, get funded, and inshallah, start 
our own community starting to um, bring up businesses. Next Facebook, the next, you know, whatever it is, will come, inshallah, from within our community. That's the basic concept there. Multi-purpose rooms, we get, I, I cannot tell you how many of these we get on a weekly basis, right? I want a room uh, to do Urdu speaking, uh, Quran recitation, Arabic speaking, Quran recitation, for this, that, and everything else in between. It is hard for us to accommodate that today. So we'll have that in there, inshallah. Sports center for our entire community, especially our young brothers and sisters. They wanna play soccer, they wanna play basketball, they wanna play volleyball, all that stuff. We cannot do it today. We don't have the, the, uh, the avenue to do it. You guys saw what we did in the front for soccer. That's about how much we can do today, right? So inshallah that will be deployed as well. Classrooms, um, you know, a lot of you want us to start a school. That is definitely under consideration, and inshallah we took that into consideration with the new uh, building to, uh, to be able to accommodate that. Um, parking is a lot of the reason why a lot of people come here is for parking, right? So inshallah with the new design, we will gain actually more parking than we have today, right? So we will have under parking structure on the east side of the building that will accommodate up to uh, 242 additional cars inshallah. Uh, ground level parking, and that's the total parking spots that will be available. We've got about 275 legal ones today. I know, you know, some of you guys see how crazy it gets at some points. Next slide. Um, so, the money slide. So we're projecting this, inshallah, to cost about $15 million. Um, three to five years to break ground. And some of you might say, oh my God, wow, why so long? Well, that's how long it takes for us to go through blueprinting and approvals uh, from the city. And we probably will have to go through 20, 30 different hearings uh, with our neighbors. And uh, we will have to get all that approved. And unfortunately, that is what is projected at this point. Inshallah, we'll be able to speed it up. But also part of that is also uh, talking to you and the wider community to attain the foundational funds to be able to work on the project. Okay? Next slide. Do you have a plan view? Yes. Do you have a plan view of the layout? Yeah. yeah. Um, I talked about the parking, some of the, some of the things we talked about. Qibla orientation was the toughest thing for us to do, believe it or not. If you, we literally had to flip the entire thing on its axis in order for us to face the Qibla. We have a choke point right there, if you notice when, you, when you're in, uh, which is the, the neighbor's wall and our wall. That presents a, a design challenge. We have to have an entrance and an exit. We can't close one of them because of the city requirements for firefighters. So we've gone through so many different design ideas to arrive at the situation where we're able to switch or flip part of the building in order for us to orient the building to the, um, uh, to the Qibla. Tindi volume, inshallah, you know, I just, I was just, subhanAllah, I was, uh, when we were at the, the musalla, I was looking, you know, one brother has four kids, another brother has five kids, so on and so forth, right? So, you know, whereas today there's five or 600 people that come here at, at the, the highest, we're projecting that to double within the next three to five years, inshallah. Um, city planning and fire department requirements. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we've attained initial approval from the city uh, for the plan that we just showed you. And again, we've gone through multiple iterations with that. Initial uh, plans were approved by the fire department. Biggest complaint was the minaret. We had to kind of bring it down quite a bit in, in terms of height. Uh, because uh, the, the neighbors will just go crazy if we make it 70 or 80 feet. Um, flow of individuals and vehicles, another big thing. We can't make Eureka uh, wider. So that is another thing that we have to take into consideration. Sustainability, if you noticed, a very important aspect of the building was sunlight, right? There was a lot of sunlight that's coming into the building 
The octagons that were part of the design actually were designed on purpose. That it allows airflow into the building, natural airflow in the building. And if there's a storm, it actually stops a lot of the hard wind from entering the building. So that is another feature that uh, we have in there. It will be solar powered, inshallah, we'll have on the south side of the building a number of um, chargers for electric vehicles that will be connected to the solar system. So that will be, inshallah, a, a source of revenue generation for the masjid. The other thing is how do you integrate a modern design and, and ensure that an Islamic flair is integrated into it so that when you look at it, it looks like a masjid, but it's inviting at the same time, right? So that's another thing we worked hard towards. Height restrictions, uh, we had to, uh, we, we actually had to dig uh, quite deeper into the property in order for us to meet the height of the requirements. Uh, accommodation of sisters, uh, went through that uh, uh, extensively. Um, and then, you know, part of how we started this whole thing, it was, it wasn't let's talk about the building. It was more let's talk about the 50 or 60 services that we need to offer to the community, right? That was the starting point. It was not, you know, build a building and they'll come. It was actually thought through in terms of here are the list of 30 to 50 services we want to be able to offer at any point in time. And then we started the design process based on that. Um, this whole concept of compartmentalization is very important and a lot of thought went into that as well. We can just demolish the whole place and re rebuild a new. You guys need a place to pray while we're doing this project, right? So this project, inshallah, will be split over four phases, right? We're gonna build, we're gonna make that uh, a musalla, so you guys can continue to pray, and then next phase, next phase, next phase, inshallah. And then the neighbors. This is gonna be a, a big challenge for us. We have to hire a PR firm. Um, as, as soon as we have your blessing, as a community, uh, we will go out and hire a PR firm now to start working on uh, ensuring that the neighbors are good and okay with the plan. Next slide. That's it. Thank you, Brother Saad. Appreciate it. Go ahead. Sorry about that. Is that good? Okay. Sorry. Can anyone hear me? Alhamdulillah. <laughs> okay. So I'm really excited, you know, about this plan, and I wanted to uh, just recap a little bit about what Brother Saad said, right? So as he mentioned, we do a lot of activities here. As you all know, at any given time, every day we have two to three different activities going on. And there are times, tangible times, I can say that we have had to shift people and places in order to accommodate. This last Wednesday was an example. We had a fundraiser for an American film documentary, but at the sa same time we had MMA, mixed martial arts going on. We had to move that group into the Masala area and then we had a banquet going on at the same exact time here. We've had times when we have uh, people want to book the hall, but it's already booked. So then they have to book an outdoor space instead, for example. Um, so we've had this happen and we really feel that when you look five, ten years down the road, we will fill up on capacity and our facility will need to expand to accommodate everyone, inshallah. So, you know, that being said, really what's in it for us is our legacy, our hereafter, and inshallah, whatever we put into it will be served for generations. One of the things that I feel that it, uh, I was involved with was Chino Valley Islamic Center. That center, you know, we had that once in a lifetime opportunity to purchase a property, build, and now Alhamdulillah, it's built. And there's not, you know, much more to do because there's a facility there, but we're in a unique position where we have the opportunity to give and to create something that's not there yet. Um, so with that said, really, we want to get your feedback tonight. And there are different things I wanted to point out in terms of QR codes. So if you have a smartphone, uh, definitely you can take it out. I give you permission to scan these codes. I'll leave this slide on for a while. Uh, the first is the video. So the presentation you just saw, that overview sl uh, slide, we're gonna put it up on YouTube 
and I'm also going to probably send a message on the community. But if you want that video, please look at it, subscribe to it, like it. That would really do us a lot of good in terms of spreading awareness of this project. The next thing is the survey. This is only for the attendees here, really. Um, we would like you to fill this out because you are the core group. It shows that you're very interested you know, being here. And it's asking simple questions like, what features do you like the best out of the overview? What are we missing? Uh, what additional considerations should we you know, think of, right? And you know, contact information is optional, but please do fill this out because it'll give us a good idea and there's one question in there that I really do want to hear is, should we proceed with this project or not? And I'm hoping for the people who fill out the survey, the answer is yes, this is a good project, we should proceed. And this will also serve to help others understand that yes, we presented to the community and overwhelmingly people do want to do this. Um, in terms of social media, if you want to hear more about this particular plan and things that are coming up, you can scan this QR code. We have a lot of different resources, Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, places to connect with us so that you can stay tuned in terms of what the developments will be as we move forward. And lastly, um, if you are really passionate and you think this is great, we also have a donation link set up already. So we, you can go to uh, donate.icwell.org, select master plan as the category if you want to give there. And if you want feedback, to be honest, if you forget to fill out the survey tonight or you think of something, you know, when you go home, you're like, oh, we should have had this in the plan or we should have done this. Just go to icwell.org, scroll to the very bottom. There's a feedback form. Just add the subject master plan. And even there, you can make it anonymous. All you have to do is put a fake email address if you don't want to be known who you are. Or you can just put in your real email address and we may be able to contact you if we have questions or want clarification on your feedback. But that's the best way to provide documented feedback because that will go directly to our office staff. We'll be accumulating it about once or twice a week into a list and the board will be reviewing and vetting all of this. Uh, we really do take, take your, you know, your feedback seriously and tonight we actually have our other board member, Samara, Sister Samara with a laptop right there. Whatever questions you have, she's documenting it and whatever answers we're giving so we understand what the concerns are and what you like, what you don't like so that we can uh, definitely make improvements. Uh, mashallah, Brother Saad worked really hard on this plan. It's been more than a year in the making, to be honest. So even though you're seeing it tonight, a lot of behind the scenes work has gone in. But this is the first time you all are seeing it. So we want to get this opportunity to get your feedback uh, because this is the time when we can make the most changes. Um, with that said, I think we can open up to Q&A. Is there anything else, Brother Saad, or we're good Q&A? So we're gonna have a couple people with mic microphones uh, going around the room. They're, this is being live streamed, so we want to ensure that if anyone has a question, it can be heard for people online who aren't able to attend in person. Some, somebody asked about, we have a floor plan. Yes, floor plan. We have so, a bunch of floor plans. So yes. If you're interested in seeing them, this will be posted in Sarge, uh, Just repeating the question for those online. So someone asked if there's a floor plan. We do have a floor plan and we'd be happy to share it, um, you know, uh, at a future event or you know in person whenever you, please feel free to approach us we're always here um, but for the purpose of this we wanted to at least share the video oh okay it's all on now great so here is the floor plan from a top level view this is the the second upper level with the offices in the classrooms and I think there's one other slide potentially which is the roof level but I don't think there's yeah oh which is fine okay so as you can see, the front of the building has the garden, the water feature. There'll be a multi-purpose room towards the front. Uh, there'll be cafe, uh, which will be a great place to meet and socialize. Uh, minaret, prayer area for women and men on the first floor, as well as a sports center. So this is kind of the general layout, and there'll be underground parking that'll enter through here and exit through the, the north side. Okay. Yeah, it should be in this deck, uh, if you want to just keep scrolling. There, okay. So, I can give an introduction for those who are not familiar with us. Brother Awais Dadaboy is our president. Uh, mashallah, he's the CEO of Amana Mutual Funds, the president of our masjid, the president of Uplift Charity. So he does a lot of great work in the community. He couldn't be here today because he was actually traveling and on a flight. He's landing at 10 o'clock. Uh, but definitely, you know, he, he, he was uh, wishing us the best and hoping that this would go well with the community. Uh, we have Brother Saad, who just did the presentation, who's our vice president. Uh, mashallah, he's a you know, senior VP at a uh, Hitachi company, and he does a lot of great work in terms of leadership. 
So his role on the board is to spearhead this master plan and also help with leadership, whether it's HR issues, managing our five-year strategic plan, how we're going to achieve our milestones. That's all, you know, mashallah, what Brother Saad does. Uh, Sister Samara does a lot of all the finance work. Her uh, background is in uh, finance and accounting. Uh, that really helps us to keep track of donations, make sure we're doing the right thing, make sure we're expensing correctly, we're doing our taxes appropriately, and so forth. Uh, myself, my name is Brother Noor, and I'm responsible for marketing. So if you follow us on Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, I do post, but honestly, we mashallah have a huge team. Uh, Brother Juan, I see in the crowd here. I'm sure there are others that are in the crowd. But, you know, we all work together and everyone has a piece, whether it's creating design. Sister Zainab's right there, actually, who does a lot of our design work. We have, uh, you know, a team that does our social media, our newsletters. It requires a lot of work and Alhamdulillah, it's been a pleasure leading that team. You all see Brother Faroz a lot. He is in charge of operations, so he'll do a lot of the events. So he's all about events and logistics and setting up new programs. And while we have a lot of programs today, we want to start book club. We want to start, uh, you know, a, a basketball club. We want to start, uh, for example, business club. Like all these things that we just don't have room on the calendar to accommodate today. And Sister Hanan is also from a finance accounting background, but she helps with our fundraising and our donations as well. Uh, that's definitely very intensive. And then Brother Shezad does a lot of the construction work and Sunday school management. So if you saw the beautiful front patio, that was all Brother Shezad's work. Uh, and you know, if there's any questions around the facility or improvements or things like that, he's the right person to go to for that. So, just a quick overview for those who did not know our roles. Okay. So, I think we can open it up for feedback. If we have the mics, I don't know. We have okay. We have the mic runners. Uh, so, Brother Sal, if you want to come up on stage too, we can just start with questions. So, I see one up here in the front. So it looks beautiful, and thank you for presenting that. I have one concern, it's the flow. Now, that design looks really good on paper, mm -hmm. but we've seen it, the flow on Juma, for example. Um, you have people parking wherever they want, like today somebody parked on the grass. You have people just parking in areas that they're not supposed to. Um, have, have we considered, or actually made any effort to buy the property next door, maybe to expand? Great question, I'll have Brother Saad handle that one. Um, that's right. Yes, many times. Because okay. it seems like that's something we should do before we do an update a site plan. It's, uh, it, it, the site plan seems too far ahead. It seems like there's too much commitment to a site plan that's built around really bad flow. And I, I feel like we should not proceed until we buy some adjacent properties. Zakallah, that's a great question. We have... Uh, yeah, can you re I'm sorry. The, the question is, did we attempt to buy the, the next door property uh, to alleviate the flow? Um, again, great question. Jazakallah for that. Unfortunately, even if we buy it, it's not going to alleviate the flow. It alleviates the flow getting out of the property, but you have a choke point being Eureka. Right? So we did a, a traffic study, um, and we are looking at... Uh, making requests to the city, there will be a light put up on Fast and Cherry. Fast and Cherry, there will be a light there, and we're looking at working with the city on changing the timing of the lights to make it longer on Fridays or in certain uh, times of the year, like Ramadan, inshallah. But unfortunately, you will not get rid of that choke point unless Eureka gets wider. It's, it's really that simple, right? So um, there are some ideas that we can discuss with you guys about um, controlling groupings of people leaving the property during rush hours, like on Fridays, on Ramadan, so on and so forth, like segmenting the, the community so that you don't have a mad rush leaving the property, inshallah. Does that, does that answer the question? But uh, just, just to, to answer your question directly, We've talked to the two houses that are uh, south of us so many different times, right? If anybody has any idea or has a way of getting those two houses to sell, I mean, we'll be indebted to you for eternity because it will square out the property and it will make our lives 
significantly easier when we're building and when we're designing, right? Um, but that's, that's just a byproduct where we are. To solve that problem, just so you guys understand, to solve that problem, we have looked at the entirety of your Belinda, all of your Belinda, to see if there is a bigger piece of land that we can acquire. There's one. That one is up past the cherry, right next to the Buddhist temple. It's about, I don't know, 28 acres or some, something like that. We've approached them. We said, hey, listen, we'll buy eight acres. Name your price. They said, you either buy the whole thing or you don't. Right? Um, and we've gone through multiple iterations of negotiations with them. They won't budge. They want $34 million for it. It's a great price. It's a great, I mean, it's, it's a big piece of land. But it's just, you know, 34 for the piece of land, another 20 to build on it. You're in the 55, 60 million dollar range, right? Um, we've looked at, you know, buying a commercial park, right? Uh, we've looked at all of your Belinda and parts of Ray. In order for us to be able to find something that would fit our needs, we would have to go into West Anaheim. And that puts us out of the region where most of our community members are. So we've gone through, I mean, when he tells you a year, it took a year and we've, I don't want to say we've covered all the bases, but we've tried to cover all the bases, including talking to real estate agents, talking to the city of Placentia, of your Belinda, to see if there's anything on the horizon. And unfortunately, as it stands today, there is a, but it's all in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Something might pop up and that's, we're, we're keeping okay. that uh, as a possibility. Go ahead. That, that was the next. Uh, so, hand. Brother Sal, is your mic working or? It is, okay. Can you guys hear him though? Or? I, I have one comment ahead, and one question. Sure. Uh, it used to be that your Belinda had a height requirement of two, two stories only, but that has already been done away. You, now you can go five stories. So, parking structure can be five stories that will give you a lot more. Uh, uh, you will never get the neighbors to accept that. Hmm? You will never get the neighbors to accept that. Yes, yeah, that's, we that's... know. But the neighbors, I mean, when we talked to a couple of the neighbors about the minaret alone, uh, it was a non-starter. So you tell them you're going to put the five-story building here, not a chance. <laughs> not a chance. Yeah, and neighbors, so all of that changes. I mean, you know, we can, we can certainly consider it, and we're documenting all these. But we, we've gone through that, right? Because, you know, the, the other thing is they were saying you can build residential properties, the city will allow you that because of some law in California that the city of your building hasn't approved, that hasn't been approved yet. Yeah, okay. So. Okay, the other question was that actually $15 million at today's prices of $365 a square foot only buys you 41,063 square feet. So is, is your plan long, larger than that or smaller than that? Uh, in terms of the square footage of the future property, right. um, it is about 46,000 square feet. So you are short of, uh, that means you are short of money. Well, it, it depends. I mean, we've, we've ran through that. If you were to go hire an external uh, general contractor, it would cost you that much. But we've gone through that. We can talk to you about the specifics of the pricing offline. But yes. Right. You're right. If I was to go out in the open market, it would cost more than $15 million. Yes, this, is, this is an initial estimate, brother. This is not set in stone. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Uh, you have a question? Yes. Yeah. 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 You're talking about seven people per car so we're we're not expecting all of them to park on the property right but just ha like today have you considered maybe um utilizing maybe the roof to have it um be utilized as a parking spot or maybe building an underground to accommodate more uh parking spots we are the 240 spots are underground uh, i meant like more parking spots like it seems that 350 and then you know when you have Jum'ahs or when you have big um, gatherings 2,500 people there's going to be a lot of cars that are needed to park outside as well you're still going to have the same issue we we expect that we are not going to accommodate the 2,500 people on the property we're not going to be able to provide parking for every single car on the property 
So there will be uh, a need to park in the neighborhood. But the other aspect of this is we're considering, this thing's gotten crazy. We're considering off-site uh, parking uh, arrangements and or an acquisition of off-site parking structure that enables us to bus people back and forth. So I want to jump in on this question. And I think for the people online, I just want to reiterate. So the concern was that there wasn't enough parking for the size of the facility for 2,500 people, right? So 2,500 is max capacity. We're not looking at filling that up every day. And if you look at um, you know Jumma to Jumma, somewhere between 500 to 1,000 maybe. So to give you perspective, the amount of parking we have today is about 220 spots. So 350 is about 120 or so spots more than what we have today. So it should be a decent number for the Friday to Friday that we have, and even through Ramadan. But obviously the 27th night, if you have a huge festival, that number will change. But the nice thing that about the area we're in right now is that we have street parking that's available, that's free, that people can also utilize that if there's not parking in the lot. But you're right, I mean, that's why we were actually, that was one of our initial reasons to look for another property was to see if we could get something bigger to accommodate more spots. Unfortunately, that's what we have today in the plan. But great, great feedback, though. Appreciate it. Um, What do you mean? So, like so the feedback is so the feedback is the outside parking on the back of the lot to do a two story. For example, another oh, yeah, uh, yeah, maybe yeah, underground yeah. underneath that area as well, so you have double parking as well. Yeah. We'll 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 yeah. jot that down, okay. inshallah. We'll take it into consideration. Okay, there's a question, question on that side. Okay. Right? okay. So the plan we have is for the for the five acres, right? I'm sorry, for what? The the plan we have here. That's going to be on the this plot here, right? That's five yes. acres. Yes. And then, is there a, a, a how about the state? Do they uh, uh, give any uh, money for the? Uh, because I know they uh, give it to churches, but have we asked the state the, for um, any funds? Yeah, they, they they will not give you funds to build. They'll give you special purpose funds, like for security which we applied for, we received $100,000, and that's the, the walls that you see around the entire building. And we just applied for another security fund, inshallah, pray that we get Thank that as well. But for the actual building, the state will not fund any, any religious institution for that. That goes against the whole separation of, yeah, yeah. So they won't do that. They'll, again, they'll give you money to put up cameras and for security reasons but not specifically to build uh, on the property. Any other questions? Yeah, question. I didn't have a question, more of a comment. Sure. Um, taking into account residential area and all the surroundings and limitations we have, I think you guys have come up with a good plan. I'm actually shocked that you were able to get this approved by the conceptual by the city. So good job. Thank you. Jazakallah. Yeah, go ahead. So I was really concerned about the maintenance cost. Is there an estimate on monthly maintenance? Because when you, if you're going to have that much glass, that's a lot of window washing. There's just, I imagine like the air conditioning is going to be significantly higher as well because you have so much light coming in. Mm -hmm. Just is there an estimate on that? No, nope. not yet. No estimate, but Wait, good feedback. Well, yeah, that's, that's something great we feedback, consider, but we yeah. haven't gotten that far yet. Yeah. Jazakallah khair. So there's a question in the back first so Go ahead. I'm sure you guys have already considered this um, but the bigger property that you guys looked at that's 34 million dollars have you considered maybe talking to like a real estate person to like split that land up and be able to sell other portions of it and keep what we need so that we can build on we've it talked actually. to two Muslim investors and uh, said listen we'll we'll go with any arrangement that gives us about eight acres um, from a profitability perspective, it doesn't work for them. But that's that's a great that's that's a great question. Um, unfortunately, that did not pan out at this point, right? We're we're still exploring things around that, ideas around that, and certainly, if you have any ideas, any of you guys have any ideas, please let us know. Because you know, we talked to a couple of community members that said, listen. Buy the bullet and go buy it. 
And I said, okay, give me a check for $30 million and I'll go buy it, right? But their concern is valid. Their concern is, listen, 30, 40 years from now, you're gonna run out of space again. You know, what are you gonna do, right? But the, those are the limitations that we have today that we're trying to deal with today, projecting for the next, you know, 10 to 15 years. And, and to add to some color to that, um, I do want to say that even that property, that's 30, 40 acres, it's within a residential area as well. So similar challenges, even though it's a larger property, we'll still have neighbors and have to deal with ins and outs and things like that too. I have a couple of comments here. One is, may Allah reward you for all your hard work here. Uh, second, the parking issue, I think we can overcome. Uh, we know that the estimate 500 to 1,000 max on Juma, a major events like Eid and others, as you always uh, plan, we always go out and get buses to, uh, for that one day event, it's not worth it to put millions of that money or that fund, we can put it somewhere else. Now my question is, uh, any kind of project uh, or planning, we always, or other major corporations, they start establishing the fund, allocating the fund, and a fundraising, professional fundraising team within our community uh, to make a committee that will start specifically only for this project and, and allocate all that fund and communicate with either locally or internationally. There are a lot of fa'al khair out there that might want to contribute when they know that there is a Beit Allah is going to be built here. So That's a great suggestion. That's, I think, definitely yeah, that, something that we should consider and yeah, will consider. That's, just that's fantastic. So, thank thank you. you. I think we'll end up having multiple committees for the project to come forward, inshallah. That's a fantastic uh, suggestion. Jazakallah khair. Did you have uh, another question? Yeah. I said, okay, that's great. You're going to build, but then uh, aren't you going to demolish this and then you build the same area? Yeah. Yeah, so I talked about that. To, to repeat the, so I, I, yeah. I can uh, just repeat it. So the concern is where are we going to pray while the construction happens, right? So it is going to happen in phases where certain parts of the building will be demolished while other places we pray. And then once that gets demolished, we move to a different location to pray while the new place gets built. So it's going to be juggling around within the facility while certain parts are being built, other areas are being used for prayer. So it may be that we use this temporarily MPR for prayer while we are constructing the front or we build a new part of the building, that's where we're praying and then we're constructing the next phase. So it's been thought out in a way that we can do it in phases such that you know, we'll have a place to pray at any given time because we have to still function as a center. But definitely it will be a challenge over those five to 10 years to, to make that happen. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Not yet. Not yet. Okay, so you want to repeat it for people on? Uh, he asked if we received entitlement from the city for the, the new project. Working on that though. Go ahead, brother. Do you have any funds? Do you already have any funds accumulated or we, are we starting from ground zero? We are starting, alhamdulillah, from ground zero. From ground zero. That's how we our, like it. First, okay. first, first level. <laughs> so I think there are I mean, a lot of sisters in the crowd. I, I would love to hear from Any questions from, from sisters, the sisters? Yeah, There's one in the back. There's yeah, one the right two here. here. Yeah. So we'll start with the maybe back first and then forward. There's one right here, brother. Right, sister. Alaikum. So I just had a quick question about the schooling that you mentioned. That I know that we have had a church before this and they did not allow a school in the same location right. because we're between all residential area. Right. And we need to be at a bigger intersection for that. So is that, because we're going to do all this investment now, is that going to, you think that's going to change? Uh, we're hoping that it would. Uh, but again, on the table right now is, do we do it on site? or is the school going to be off-site? And we're looking at a couple of properties as we speak as candidates that are close in proximity for that, inshallah. And, that, but that conversation is taking place with the city. And I think, you know, I just want to add some thoughts to that. Honestly, my, my girl is five years old. I really care about schools. I think schools are very important and Islamic schools are filling up. But I think one of the things that we also have to recognize is the expertise of who's here. And unfortunately, none of us here are you know, qualified to lead a school. And we really feel that maybe a partnership with a local institution that's already doing schools would maybe be a better approach to it. But definitely open to ideas and suggestions because we do recognize that there's a need for a school. 
whether we can do it here with you know trying 8 a.m. trying to get 500 kids into classes with Eureka, you know that's very unlikely to happen. That's why the model doesn't has classrooms probably for Sunday school, but I think you know it requires special permits and definitely has a lot more a little bit more thinking behind it. But open to ideas if anyone can come up with anything. Inshallah. So just to follow up on that, would we look into a property that would have that kind of you know thing going? Just to change location, would that be something that ICYL would consider? Yes. Yes, we could, inshallah. Yes. But we just haven't come across any property right now that can we, accommodate we're that. We're looking yeah. at two as yeah. we speak. Yeah. But again, initially looking at those to uh, start engaging with the owners to see if there's interest in uh, selling, inshallah. Yeah. They're, they're schools. Sister. All right, I have to qu two questions in regards to revenue generation possibilities. What is the capacity of the event space? There's a multi-purpose room, like if there's weddings, events, how many people can that accommodate? So um, at, this, at this point, the multi-purpose room that we're proposing will accommodate up to three to 400 people, give or take, right? So inshallah, that's, that's what... I, I don't know, I don't remember yeah. off the top of my head. Three to 400 people, okay. uh, because we talked about that. Um, okay. So we'll be able to accommodate that kind of crowd, and again, the um, the way we're designing the center, inshallah, we will able be able to open um, different spaces, combining them together to allow for larger types of events, inshallah. Okay, um, I saw a cafe. Will there be a commercial kitchen as well? We are not planning on having a commercial kitchen. There will be a cafe. Mm -hmm. Right, that allows you to grab a cup of coffee, a, a donut, or whatever it is. Uh, no donuts, they're, they're bad for you. Okay. But something else. That's um, right. Something healthy. Um, and that's really going to be attached to the business center, mm -hmm. right? Inshallah. Okay, and then the other part was uh, would you consider having an adult daycare for our elderly? Because that would be a great option to have during the weekdays when the, the mosque is pretty much empty daytime and you know, we have a lot of elderly in our community, so Royal Club Room. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great and suggestion, split. Yeah, great suggestion. We'll note that down. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Perfect. Any other questions from the sisters? There's one right there. All right. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as um, Quick question is, I understand it's really difficult with the parking situation. I know we keep on going back and forth with it, but uh, isn't it a better investment to like purchase a property nearby that we do see some lots that's open and just build a structure and then have like maybe, you know, like a, I don't know, golf cart type of situation or whatever you, that they can bring the people into the parking, especially for the elderly, that would only be for certain, you know, groups that is unable to walk to, you know, to accommodate, you know, would so, that be something you guys would yeah. consider? So, so we, we did. There's a property off of Bastion Cherry. It's a horse property. It's about 1.8 acres. Um, the, the problem is the cost and the benefit that you get with that, right? So, you know, they want $2.8 million for it, right? To, to build a property, I think, um, uh, per car, it's about $25,000. So just keep that in mind. So now you're, you're, you're getting an astronomical numbers just to build a, uh, a parking facility, off-site parking facility. We have partnerships with the, the, the churches, uh, churches uh, and, yeah. and whatnot. I mean, we, we, we do that every Ramadan, right? Um, with yeah, the, so the temple off of Bastion Cherry, we have buses that go back and forth with the Friends Church. Uh, we have buses that go go back and forth for special events in Ramadan. So Usually we have for that special every large year. event days. Yeah, yeah we have yeah. that. Now. We do we do have that. We, yeah. Otherwise, we wouldn't be <laughs> able to do what we do in Ramadan. <laughs> but uh, we did yeah. consider it. We did talk to uh, to the owners of that property. It is the closest pro property in proximity. There's a house right across from us. That's a, an acre and a half. We also approach the owner of the house again. They, he's not interested in in selling. But uh, yeah, we kind of thought about that as well. Any other questions? Sure. Uh, I don't have a such question, but just a suggestion. Sure. 
this business center thing, can we, uh, have you considered adding a sort of a library where people can have a monthly subscription and maybe come for studies or use space for group discussions or something. So this way it could be a revenue generating activity as well as Islamic library or maybe yeah. something. So that will be offered for free, brother. We're not gonna charge our community for that, especially the young people. Uh, there will be a library uh, attached to the business center as well, mm -hmm. inshallah. But we're not, the thinking right now is we want that space to be used for ideation to generate ideas, because the basic concept here is if three or four businesses are sprung up from that and are successful, inshallah they will take care of the place going forward. Yeah, so the, the idea is not to charge for that. Sure, thank you. Jazakallah khair. And I think we should uh, encourage carpooling. Uh, if possible, right? So if, if two brothers are coming from the same kind of street and all that, you should actually really promote carpooling within yeah. the masjid during Ramadan at least. Yeah. It also promotes brotherhood and as well as driving sustainability, right? You know? Yeah, that's Shalom. a good idea. Jazakallah khair. Any other questions? Sure. There's a question right here. And I know it's getting late, so if anyone needs to leave, please feel free to do so. Um, but we're we're here. So maybe we can wrap up in like another two questions, and then if anyone has questions, they can approach us. I believe last time when we had an initial meeting about the project, you mentioned something about environmental issues and how the green design was included. Yeah. You uh, want to you you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, so uh, the solar, no, go ahead. I think you have a better grip on what we're doing from solar panel perspective. No? Okay. It's, it's a yeah. lot of it is centered yeah. a lot around solar. Yeah. So um, the, the place, inshallah, will be powered exclusively by solar. We're looking at water, water treatment, specifically for um, all the trees and, and all the greenery around the building as well. And we're looking at it to be, inshallah, LEED certified building going forward. Jazakallah khair. All right, so one question. more question, one and more then question. if anyone has questions, they can Go always ahead. approach us. Yeah. Go ahead, I'll repeat it, go ahead. Wherever we go in, can we start charging for parking if somebody's not carpooling? Because, like, <laughs> Our parking lots are so full, and in, to, I guess to reduce the amount of cars, maybe if we say like any car below three people, if we could start charging even a nominal amount, it'll start raising funds too. Brother, if I did that, if we do that, my, I'm gonna have to hire six bodyguards. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just a thought. It's difficult, like for example, for me, I'm volunteering, and then so I have to drive here, and then my husband, my kids will just come afterwards. Then you're going to charge me, and I'm just volunteering. I don't think I I wanted to volunteer. See, it's already starting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so I think inshallah we'll Jazakallah khair, everybody. wrap up. Jazakallah khair for everyone for yeah. attending and brother Saad for the presentation. Yeah. We're here. Please come up with your phones, scan these QR codes. I'm going to play the video on the screen, so on the upcoming days, if you don't see it tonight, you'll see it on this screen, in the lobby screen, so go stop by, look at it in more detail, and this is the chance in the next month or two to get feedback.